Good morning. On a, on a very happy day at Babson College. When just over 100 days ago, President Len Schlesinger announced his plans to step down at the end of the academic year, the trustees of Babson College knew that we had a, an opportunity to find a leader who could both take us boldly into the centennial of 2019 here and position the college for continued greatness in the second century. Thanks to Len and his team, we entered the search with confidence that comes from being in a position of academic, financial, and reputational strength like never before. With a clear vision of what we could be for the second century and with a determination to find a leader who could build on the momentum of the recent past, realize our vision, and take us beyond what we even dreamed possible. I am proud to say that there's no question in the trustee's mind that we found that person. We found a leader in Dr. Kerry Healy who embodies Babson's mission of shaping entrepreneurial leaders who create economic and social value everywhere and whose life exemplifies what we call entrepreneurship of all kinds, the act of being entrepreneurial in organizations of all types and sizes. Her work is a testament that she thrives in dynamic environments, is energized by change, and takes action to produce results, and is committed to making a difference in the world and inspiring others to do so. From founding nonprofit organizations that help transform societies and creating new approaches to solving social issues, to teaching students to lead real institutional change, and launching a TV show to put a spotlight on innovation, Kerry's entrepreneurial leadership in a variety of contexts has made an impact in the US and across the globe. Her achievements in academia, government, and humanitarian efforts speak to the results that she can achieve in any environment and to the extensive relationships and connections that she has cultivated. While Babson is widely known as the best school in the world for entrepreneurship and our global footprint is significant, Kerry's global connections will undoubtedly extend our reach and influence and bring needed resources to accelerate our efforts. I want to thank the Presidential Search Committee, especially Craig Benson, who chaired the effort, for the comprehensive, diligent, and highly inclusive process that, that they underwent to help produce this outstanding result for Babson. Ultimately, more than 170 candidates were considered for the presidency. Given the criteria put forth by the committee on behalf of the community and the job description, Kerry stood out uniquely. She really did. Last, last night, the Board of Trustees voted to name Dr. Kerry Healy our next president, knowing that with her entrepreneurial leadership and powerful global network, she can boldly lead Babson at this pivotal time in the college's history. We are privileged that Kerry is returning to her roots in academia full time to serve as Babson's president. So it is with great pleasure on behalf of the trustees of Babson College that I would like to introduce Dr. Kerry Healy, the next president of Babson College. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for that kind introduction, and thank you to all of the trustees who've given me the honor of becoming Babson's next president. Uh, notice I didn't mention which president that would be, uh, uh, but I'm, you can call me superstitious, but I'd far rather be known as Babson's first woman president than Babson's 13th president. So we're just going to go with that. Um, and I'm also excited to be the first woman to lead Babson as the number one school in the world for entrepreneurial education. It's a wonderful institution, and I'm so honored to be here today as its next president. When I shared the great news with my mother this morning uh, about uh, the fact that I was going to be the next president of Babson College, she said two things which, uh, which I'd like to, to share with you. The first one, which seems like an extraordinary uh, uh, coincidence, uh, is that my mother knew all about Robert, Roger Babson, and she was thrilled that I was going to be associated with this organization. Way back uh, at the end of the Great Depression, um, my, my grandfather uh, went to Florida and he'd, he'd lost everything. He had to go back and start over, and he started over as a citrus farmer uh, right si outside of Tampa. And 
my mother was his only child, and when he started this business, it finally started to thrive. And when she was 16, she was ready to go to college. He had enough money to send her to some college, and the college he wanted to send her to was a new business college in Florida that had been founded by Roger Babson for women. And so that was her father's ideal for her. Now, unfortunately, she didn't have enough money to go to that college, but she always remembered that Roger Babson was her father's uh, hero, uh, both in business and, and also in education. And so she was so proud of me that, I, that I'm going to get to lead this Babson College here in Massachusetts. Now, the other thing she said to me was how extraordinary it is what can be accomplished in the course of a generation. She was the first woman uh, in our family to attend college, and now I'm going to have this great privilege of leading a college. So uh, I think that uh, as a woman, that is a very exciting uh, moment for me. I'm glad that, that I was able to share that with her. Uh, Roger Babson was an extraordinary figure, and he had the vision to see that business education would benefit everyone, men and women, and today, Babson College has the vision to expand access to entrepreneurship education to everyone in every corner of the globe. Truly, I'm honored and excited about the opportunity to lead this energetic institution. Many of you who knew me best from politics may not realize that I actually started my career in academia. I spent many years working with students, researching, and publishing. Uh, in fact, I earned my PhD from Trinity College Dublin, and I had every intention in the world uh, to become an academic at that time. But as happens with many of us, um, Fate intervenes, and when I married, my husband uh, needed to go to law school, and I needed to work to pay for it. So instead, I ended up working at Apt Associates, which is a think tank here in Cambridge. And there, I, I was working for the Justice Department, bringing together the country's top academics in criminal justice with the country's most innovative and effective practitioners. And the decade I spent working in social policy consulting taught me two very important lessons about how those two worlds fit together. First is that when you are solving the world's most difficult policy questions, you must bring together the expertise in the academy, like here at Babson, with the wisdom of those working in the field, also like Babson. And two, there is too often a missing link between those who know what works and those who have the power to make the changes that are needed to solve society's and our world's greatest challenges. This missing link, the ability to translate innovative knowledge into action, is what originally drove me to enter politics. I wanted to be in a position where I could help make the decisions that would put policies and programs in place that would truly make a difference for our country and our world. Over the last three decades, my appreciation for how research and scientific ins uh, discovery inspire new ideas and innovation has only grown. As Lieutenant Governor, I had the great privilege of being able to see firsthand the extraordinary research and social innovation that lies beneath the entrepreneurial successes here in New England. It takes both knowledge and leadership to make that happen, and combining academic knowledge with real-world leadership to create entrepreneurial change is something that Babson is uniquely equipped to do. That unique position makes me all the more excited to lead Babson as it enters its second century. From a very young age, I've understood the connection between quality education and opportunity. That's another thing my mother taught to me. And I can tell you that I would not have had the opportunity to study at, at Harvard College or Trinity College Dublin, where I got my PhD, um, if I had not had the benefit of substantial and very generous scholarships. My own story about how my family struggled to, to pay for my college education is over 30 years old now. But I bet that it's very similar to, to the same kind of concerns and struggles that families confront today and the students here at Babson confront today. Um, my mom was an elementary school teacher. She was the sole support of my family. Uh, when I was getting ready to, to go to college, my dad had had a disabling heart attack. Uh, when I was 15 and wasn't able to work anymore. 
but maybe because of my mom's experience not being able to go to the college of her choice all those years ago when her dad had wanted her to go to Babson's uh, business school, my mom told me, don't worry about it. She said, just get into whatever college you want to go to, and we will figure it out. And she did. Uh, and, and we all pitched in. I worked several jobs. I applied for every scholarship. And my family made incredible sacrifices for me to be able to have my education because they believed strongly that that's where opportunity came from, from that education. And so I still feel enormously indebted to them and grateful to them for the opportunity that they gave me. Thanks to their sacrifice, I'm standing here in front of you today. And so you can trust me as a leader of this college that I am going to be absolutely focused on making sure that this college is affordable for all of the students who are out there who have an entrepreneurial gleam in their eye and who want to come here and study with the best and learn how to become entrepreneurs, I am going to work to make sure that that is possible for everyone who is qualified to be here. And I can tell you I'm very proud that as I come into this job, and very grateful to Len Schlesinger, uh, that this college currently meets 96% of student need. But I'm not going to rest until that's 100%. And this is going to be a very important part of my presidency. Another key thing that has drawn me uh, to Babson is Babson's global ambitions and its worldwide reputation as the leader of entrepreneurship education uh, of all kinds. Over the last several years, I've had the opportunity to dedicate my time and attention to establishing and growing humanitarian and philanthropic efforts, both here in the US and overseas, especially in Afghanistan. Whether it was promoting women's participation in politics through the Parity Project, which I co-chair with Ambassador Swanee Hunt, or promoting the rule of law uh, through my State Department-sponsored program in Afghanistan, I've loved the opportunity to help share, uh, to shape organizations and programs that are actually making a tremendous difference in the world. Now I'm excited to return to my academic roots, as Joe put it, uh, only because I found a school, a business school, that's all about educating and empowering leaders of every kind, teaching them how to translate knowledge into action and to make a real difference in the economy, in government, and policy everywhere. As someone who believes that education and entrepreneurship are essential in all spheres of society in order to solve problems and create value, I look forward to advancing Babson's mission to educate entrepreneurial leaders who create economic and social value everywhere, and to providing even greater opportunities for its students to succeed and make a real difference in the global economy. As Babson prepares to celebrate 100 years, there is incredible opportunity to further extend the college's impact around the world. I'm eager to help Babson expand its global reach with an emphasis on academic excellence, and I hope we can create even more opportunities to help people around the world build businesses and to draw from disciplines such as the liberal arts and the sciences in order to support their entrepreneurial ambitions. The boundaries between economic innovation and social innovation are crumbling today. Entrepreneurs of all kinds around the world are realizing the power of new technology and new business models that emphasize the triple bottom line, people, planet, and then profit. There's a growing awareness of the power of entrepreneurship to lift the neediest in the world out of poverty and to tackle some of the world's most profound environmental and social issues. I expect Babson graduates to be at the forefront of creating these business models, these new approaches that use the entrepreneurial method learned right here and to integrate and balance the needs of people, our planet, and profit. By almost every measure, Babson is one of America's elite colleges. Today, the college is highly regarded as a New England college with global reach. It's my goal to help recast Babson as a truly global leader in entrepreneurship education while maintaining its deep New England roots. There's much work to be done to help prepare Babson for its centennial in, uh, in order to strengthen and grow its position so that Babson is synonymous with entrepreneurial education everywhere. But Babson's centennial 
in 2019 serves only as a signpost, not a goalpost. It's the next step on Babson's remarkable journey as the only institution of its kind. Equally important is to get, getting to the centennial is actually helping the college determine what it's going to be in the next century. I am certain that the excellence in this community are going to make sure that the people who graduate from this community are going to have a profound impact on the world moving forward. I want to end by thanking President Schlesinger for his profound and lasting vision and his keen focus on entrepreneurship that now permeates every aspect of Babson College. I'm fortunate to be able to stand on your shoulders and I look forward to moving your vision forward. I also want to thank the trustees for their faith in me. And I pledge to Babson's alumni, faculty, staff, and students that I will be a partner with you in Babson's future success. I will listen to you and learn from you. My door and my mind will always be open. Together, we will take Babson global while preserving and valuing the unique and transformative learning experience that exists right here in Babson Park, Massachusetts. Thank you very much. So. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes. <laughs> well, you may have noticed I haven't had one before, but I will have one now. And so I, I, I'm looking to you to, uh, to help me with that. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, this afternoon uh, is going to be the first student uh, reception at, at 3 o'clock, and I expect to be on campus all this week and, and all next week and, and, you know, on and off until I begin full time in uh, the beginning of May. So uh, I'm looking forward to just walking around and, and meeting students, and I encourage them to come up and say hello. Yes. <laughs> you know, for me, it's very interesting. I, I've had a, a pretty diverse career. I've been very blessed in that. And what fascinated me about Babson is that the more I learned about Babson, the more I realized that every part of my life and every part of my learning experiences fit into that Babson bin. And so it wasn't a place where my academic uh, research and my, my love of academia wasn't in place. Absolutely, it's always in place in a college. And then it was also a place that understood that entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thinking was in way outside of business as well, that it happens in government, that it happens in social policy. And those were things I had uh, participated in and perhaps unknowingly uh, been entrepreneurial in. And so uh, the, more I, the more I learned about Babson, the more excited I got. And then there's the spirit of the place. Everyone who works here and who goes here seems to be very excited about it. And that, to me, signifies the best schools, you know, where the faculty is excited to come to work every day and the students are excited to be there. So that was the tipping point. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you.